Uh, Ma'am, we cannot hear you. You are muted. Sorry, sir. Good morning, all. On behalf of IOT Academy, we welcome you all for the fifth session of National Level Faculty Refresher Program on Quality Teaching and Strategies in HEIs. Let me introduce the resource person of today's session, Dr. Silesh Iyer. Dr. Shailesh Iyer is serving as a professor and dean, Department of CS and IT, Rai University, Ahmedabad. He is a PhD in computer science with 22 years of experience in academics, industry, and corporate training. He has patents to his credit and is editor for book projects with IGA Global USA, Taylor and Francis UK, and Bentham Science UAE. A hardcore academician and administrator, he excels in training and has delivered numerous expert talks. His research areas include computer vision, cyber security, data mining, and analytics and artificial intelligence. We welcome you, sir. And with this, we hand over the session to Dr. Shailesh Iyer. Sir, please. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for the brief introduction. Uh, first of all, I regret that I was not able to uh, conduct the session on scheduled on Friday because I had some urgent uh, inspection related work. Uh, and I really uh, thank all the participants and the organizers for uh, sparing the Sunday for this particular session. Uh, so actually, before starting with it, I'm going to talk upon ICT tools and resources. Uh, I just want to have this as an interactive session. So I just want to know if uh, how many faculties have actually used some tool which can actually be uh, they would like to share with uh, any any such tool which they have used and they have found it very uh, constructive for the participants or for the students. They can just unmute themselves and speak or they can type in the chat window. Yeah, any tools that you have used. Normally, as faculties, we use a lot of tools. So if you just want to share something. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Jyotish Goswami, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, good morning. Can, so, what kind of tools are we exactly talking about here? No, any tool that you think you have used and it has been very much uh, uh, useful for the students. It can be any no, teaching uh, tool. What, can be... No, no, what tools? Like we do have those uh, computer aided design programs and all that stuff. So, what tools exactly are, are, are we talking about here? No, for teaching purpose, whatever you have used, like it may, maybe that uh, yeah we, we, we are using yes we are using uh, yeah. ppts we are using uh, these youtube videos you know to make them uh, uh, to give them a live demonstration of what we are talking about and what we are teaching like i am a physics teacher so i do right. use uh, ppts as well as videos for experimental and uh, for theoretical references fine Actually, uh, and, we do, and we do we do have visits. We do have visits to CSIR and all to give them a, a, a live outlook. Fine. Okay. Uh, I'll just uh, actually share with you that normally there has been a survey which has been conducted uh, long back. Okay. Some people are typing YouTube videos, flipped classrooms, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom. Fine. Okay. Kahoot, yeah, fine. I just want, I did not want to name the tools because if I'm naming the tools, then some may be using, some may not be using. So I just wanted to get from you which all tools you are using. Fine, Kahoot is good. There are many such tools which are available. I'll just talk about some tools today. Uh, but actually, the survey says that hardly the first seven minutes. Now, see, online classes and offline classes are different. Now, uh, when we were actually in the lockdown stage and we were conducting online classes at that time there was a certain limitation that 
the students actually in online classes they were not having connectivity they were having a lot of problems in joining they were not that much literate the teachers also faculties from different backgrounds like from uh, csit background they are already aware about the teaching methods so they were comfortable with that but others like maybe from physics background I, i'm not sure about the level of uh, how they were using it but they really adapted very well so that was a tribute to the teachers and faculty that they adapted very well to this particular changing environment and within probably one week or 10 days they were able to actually give this kind of a feeling to the uh, students that everything is well and teaching is going on normally now whatever infrastructure issues and in from, from the side of students that we were not able to handle that because that was not in our hands but basically the focus was that we were able to deliver online classes at very short notice so that was something which was very appreciable but this survey said that whether it is online or offline first seven minutes are very important first seven minutes are very important for your uh, i mean from the student point of view because if the student in the first seven minutes if you're able to have an impact on the audience if you're able to I mean, normally what happens is that we have one hour classes, 45 minutes classes scheduled. Now, somewhere we need to look at that also. I mean, we'll be talking about that later in the question and answer session. Uh, that what should be the ideal uh, timing of a session? Should it be 45 minutes, one hour? Is it too long? Is it okay? That view also I wanted from you, but we'll uh, talk about that later in the session when we have the QA session. But the study says that survey says that first seven minutes are very important first seven minutes if you are able to engage the students interact with the students and keep them captivated then the session would be successful otherwise it is not successful normally it is quite i mean whatever right now i mean when we were studying i could say that okay we were very attentive because we had a peer of the teachers we had a lot of other factors we did not have any diversions but now students are saying that I'm getting this from the internet. I'm getting YouTube videos ready made. So why should I attend the class? So that is the argument that we are having. Uh, just on 11th, we had uh, this National Education Day. So at that time also, we had a debate in our university regarding online or offline teaching, which is better. So many of the students were saying that everything is available online. Then why should we go for offline? Why should we come to college? So that is the entire scenario that we are seeing right now. So in this context, I would just like to place my talk in a little bit different manner where I'm just trying to focus upon some aspect which probably we have not focused upon. So I'm just trying to share my screen. I'll not be able to cover many tools, but I'll just give you an idea upon what all tools are available. And then that can be, be explored by the faculties through the net. So I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible, sir. Yes, yeah. thanks. So again, I welcome you to the uh, faculty refresher program on quality teaching and strategies in um, uh, HEIs. I'm just going to talk about this. Now, this is what we were talking about. Like, this is a paradigm shift in what we were doing earlier and what we are doing right now. Uh, earlier, we had in the schools and the colleges this notice kept that no cell phones, tablets, MP3 players, or no other portable devices of any kind are allowed in the classroom. Whereas in 2020, March 2020 or April onwards, we had to shift to totally classes based on laptop or mobiles. And most of them were using mobiles because we did not have that many resources at home. Uh, so most of the students were using mobiles to log in. So what was being termed as something where we were talking about no use of mobiles, now it is totally through mobiles. And that changed the entire scenario because after one and a half years of uh, work, I mean, you can say online classes, when the students came to the campus, they were a totally changed lot. They were not ready to sit continuously. We had a lot of uh, mental issues, which we observed from the students angle, where they were not able to sit con constantly in the class for more than 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, they were getting restless. So this is something which we had to deal with and we have some uh, methods which we have devised. I will share with that uh, with you also. 
Now, what are the ICT tools, first of all, and what are the advantages of it? So ICT tools are those tools which can be useful for us for teaching purpose, for te making teaching learning very interesting, for making the audience connected, for making them feel connected with the subject. So these are the ICT tools we are talking about, uh, information and communication tools to be particular regarding the full form. Now, there are many tools which can be used. So what are the advantages we'll first see fast? Web-based LMS tools, actually learning management tools are there. Now, normally what happens is that first aspect that is there is that students now require the material. So there are LMS tools which can link the teachers, students, researchers, scholars, and education so that everything can be provided on one platform itself. So such LMS tools can also be useful. Moodle is also there. There are many such tools which can be useful for us to share the information. And the advantage is that it is cost efficient. It is very cost efficient and we can go for any LMS tool for the campus as it is very constructive and it is giving a lot of impact on whatever we want to teach. Teachers are able to teach better with graphics, video and uh, video graphics actually. That is one term where we are having video and graphics both combined into the videos. So this provides facility for easy student management. So now here, what, what happens is that uh, when we are talk, talking about uh, different tools, normally I heard first that we are normally using PPT and uh, board. So PPT and board are definitely, uh, it can be termed as a traditional and semi-traditional tools. Now we are going for tools where we are going to use some kind of tools which can be useful for us because right, right now what is happening is that students are not, uh, I mean, if you ask the student not to use the mobile in the classroom, they will get a little bit irritated. Whenever they get a chance, they'll just try to see whether they have any message in the mobile or not, whether any WhatsApp, any Instagram, anything is there or not. So what we can do is that we can use the mobile for a limited period in the classroom that we can give them the flexibility and we can have some kind of quiz taken say 15 to 20 minutes you can have a session and then after that you can give them a uh, quiz on kahoot or any such thing now that will make them interested in the subject this is what we follow over here we give them interactive modes of learning we can have role play so a lot of things are there which we can do to make the classroom more interesting so right now students are not interested in a continuous lecture where we have a ppt and we have a lot of text being uh, thrown to them so that is what we need to look at. So teachers can create interesting, well-designed and engaging classroom activities. Now classroom activities have a major impact. Actually, I've, I've seen this over my past 23 years that the students attend some sessions of some faculties and they do not attend sessions of some faculties. The reason being is the teaching methodology. Normally, if we have classroom activities every two or three sessions, then students will be attracted towards the class. So many of the class students are make it a point to attend some classes because they know that they'll be getting something to learn and it will be active and activity based classroom for them. It will not be a total one way communication. So this is something which we need to look at. So we can have improved modes of communication, direct classroom teaching. All these are advantages of having ICT tools. We can also uh, have a kind of a social impact of technological change in how we can also tell the students to actually prepare some kind of a method some kind of a use some kind of a tool and then demonstrate their capability suppose right now we are giving them a presentation that presentation they have to present a topic so we can tell them that okay we don't want this in a presentation style let it be a kind of a different method you can adopt a different method altogether so let them think also and let them present in the class. So there will be a, a interest among the audience also that, okay, something new is going to come. So that is something which actually enhances the learning process. Uh, it minimizes classroom, uh, like if the cost is also minimized because we are using online tools, which most of them are open source tools. So we don't have to pay for that. So it minimizes the cost and saves time and uh, improved data and information security. So we find that uh, we are able to conduct a lot of things effectively through ICT tools. Now, normally what I do is that uh, today I have not used that tool, but we have polling tools also. 
polling tools means what that if i want to actually say that how many of the teachers or faculties in this classroom in this session actually have used ict tools i can get the percentage of polling based on i can keep it open for polls and within uh, 10 or 15 seconds or one minute i can keep it open and after that i can close the poll and i can get an idea how much is that and i can graphically see also so such tools help the students also and the faculties also to understand the audience better so there are many such tools which we'll be talking about now advantages i've already talked out now what are the disadvantages right uh, you can interrupt me at any time during the presentation if you have any question you can interrupt me and ask no issues about it uh, i'll not be able to see the chat box right now because i'm sharing this and full screen so i'll not be able to see it but you can anyhow um, unmute yourself and you can ask the question wherever you think you won't have any question so disadvantage of ict tools is unemployment unemployment is because many of the teachers are losing the jobs due to ict tools that is one observation which i don't agree with but that is one of the disadvantages that has been projected at many places so i've just listed it over here lack of security now some of the open source tools are not secure enough so all the data that is being fed into the open source tool that is being shared on different platforms so security is an aspect which you need to look into so go for such credible tools which you are comfortable with where your security is not being compromised or so don't give such information which can raise security concerns cyber bullying can take place because again as i told you that this is one kind of cyber crime also because when you are on online and you're using online tools it can lead to a lot of problems people can have your data and they can actually try to bully you into something or they can actually even harass you in some way so that is something which you need to look into especially the schools this is a major problem because recently also like uh, during lockdown there was a case in ananiketan school uh, satellite there was such a case where one of the students photographs uh, objectionable photographs were actually uh, uh, shared when the session was going on when the school session was going on and there were a lot of threats also being placed for the school so all these things happens uh, because of online, but then we have to live with it. We can't do anything about it. So making our uh, cyber security provision stronger. There is more reliance upon technology. That means if there is no internet connectivity, then it is very difficult for us to manage the whole thing. So when the classes are dependent upon ICT tools, it creates a problem. So there should be alternative methods also. That's why I'm going to talk about blended learning i'm going to talk about collaborative learning also uh, once we complete this part social media is also one of the things because social media people i mean students are attracted more towards social media and it is creating a lot of misuse because of which ict tools are not preferred that much but social media related ict tools are preferred and that can lead to a lot of problems going ahead for the students and preparation time is also one of the issues because see if i have to prepare for a class you know, i directly go to the class and i ask any student any question that is very easy for me to do but as a faculty if i have to use a tool i have to take a test i have to make some preparation for that but once that preparation is done then the students would enjoy the session so preparation time is a major concern but i think so that much time has to be devoted if you want to make the session interesting so how does ICT help, ICT tool or ICT, how does it help us? It helps us in bringing inclusion because we are able to include all category of students. Uh, we are going to, we can impart e-learning, online learning. Subject learning can be enhanced because we can have videos, we can have a mix of different methods in which we actually deliver the solutions. Motivation learning can be provided engagement and knowledge retention now this is one very important thing that uh, normally you find in youtube we have very small videos seven to eight minutes ten minutes a concept is being um, uh, explained and that video is very short eight to ten minutes not more than that some are three to five minutes so right now students are very much you know, they, are, they don't have that much uh, patience to go through the entire video so they want the crux of the entire concept in three to five minutes so this such kind of ict tools 
including YouTube videos also can actually play an important role because you are going to give just three to five minutes crux of what is going to happen. So engagement and knowledge retention is very important. Uh, we can encourage coll collaborations because there are a lot of collaborative tools also for teachers also. Teachers can collaborate among themselves and they can develop a lot of uh, uh, things which can be useful for uh, students as well as faculties. And then we can develop ICT literacy and capability. So ultimately, this is the uh, importance of ICT in education. There are some challenges also, like we don't have that much literacy as far as our ICT tools are concerned. Second thing is that the devices and the connectivity. These are the challenges which we feel which we'll be finding when we are actually implementing ICT tools. Many of the schools do not have the infrastructure or internet connectivity also available for all the students. So if suppose I want to conduct a quiz in a school, it is not possible for me because I have to actually take the prior permission of the management. I have to make the internet active during that time. So all these issues are there which can actually be a dampener when we are going for ICT tool in education. Now, which kind of ICT tools can be used? We can use drawing and graphics program. Now, graph this uh, there are some tools like uh, infographic tools they are called like Canva, etc. They can be used for uh, some kind of research also. I mean, if you if you normally what happens is that when we are writing a research paper also, many, many of the faculties would be active into research. So when you're writing a research paper, you have a problem that uh, sometimes we take a diagram from some source and when we directly keep it, the plagiarism level increased or the diagram clarity is not there. So we can easily create diagrams using such tools and we don't have to be an expert in any kind of ICT tool for that. We can easily create drawings as per what we want. So there are many such tools which can be used. They're called infographic tools. You can explore it later, like um, there are Canva, many, many such tools are there which can be used. Web creation and design, digital video, emails, web searching, wikis, word processing, blogs. Blogs are very much fruitful and many of the students are actually attracted towards the blogs. Now, I'll just directly go on to the tools. These are some of the tools for quizzing, testing or gaming. Now, how this can be used, right? Um, all these tools, I mean, most popular is Kahoot, which most of the uh, audience would have used um, if they have been implementing some ICT tools in their class. So Kahoot is a very interesting tool, just like uh, we have on Banega Karol for the faster fingers, uh, fastest finger first. Similarly, Kahoot is such an application where we can also note down which student has answered the correct answer and which is in what time. So this is a major attraction for the students that students are attracted towards attending the class. Now, if you just tell how we can use it in the class is that if you just tell in advance that I'm going to ask a quiz in form of a Kahoot or any such tool I'm going to use. So you be attentive after 15 minutes or after 20 minutes, I'll be using I'll be using that particular tool for taking a test. So that 15 to 20 minutes, the student is glued to you, what you are teaching, what are the different uh, aspects that you want to teach. So they are very attentive. In so such kind of surprise, or you can announce in um, uh, advance also, such kind of tests can actually make them interested in that. Also, I would just like to share one small screen here. I'll just shift to one particular. Now, uh, is this slide visible? Cooperative and collaborative? Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks. So I was just actually, uh, I just wanted to cover this part also before going on to the tools because uh, right now we are talking about memorizing. Most of our uh, students i mean starting from um, basically if you talk from schooling to college we are going for memorizing i remember that okay a uh, lot of things newton's laws of motion etc what we have learned we have learned by memorizing more than understanding so at that time we did not have that many resources but now it can be taught in a different manner right so we can have go for collaborative as well as 
cooperative learning. Now we'll just go for what is collaboration. I just want to spend a few minutes here and then I'll come back to the things. So collaboration is very important. Right now, what students are lacking is that they are not able to perform in a team. They are, they are individually, they may be performing well, but they are not able to perform in a team. So how can we make them uh, work in a collaborative mode? So the process of two or more people, entities or organizations working to, uh, together to complete a particular task or achieve a goal can be termed as collaboration. That is already, we know the definition about it. Now, how does it help us? Collaboration should be first among faculties and then among students. So it helps us solve a problem. It brings people and organization closer together. It also helps people to learn from each other. Now, this is something that is lacking in the system right now. That if I am a faculty and or I am a senior faculty and some junior faculty I'm working with, I'm always close to ideas. I'm not getting new ideas because I'm not open to interaction with these faculties. So when I, whenever I'm interacting with some faculty, I need to learn something from them also. So when you're collaborating on some project or using some joint tool, etc., when you're discussing the tools, it gives you an idea regarding how you can go for a better output and better because there, there are many tools which we are not aware of but maybe the junior faculties are aware of so such kind of collaborations can help us in that also uh, we can retain the student as well as the faculty retention rates right now there are a lot of faculties who are switching over frequently so how can we deal with that so for that again collaboration is very important because if we collaborate with the faculties then they will feel that okay they they'll feel that there's an ownership and they are also part of the system so higher retention rates are there and we can make ourselves more efficient for the organization. So this is something where collaboration is very important. And collaborative learning, right, where, which is the practice of breaking students into small groups to answer questions, work on projects, and learn from one another, has become one of the strongest core philosophies operating in classrooms today. Now, leave aside ICT tools. If you use collaborative learning in the classroom physically also, that also makes a huge impact. Right. What I do, I'll, I'll just share some examples here. What I do, most of the faculties might be doing it. That um, whenever I go to the classroom, first task I do is that I ask the students to change their seats. I tell them that you should not be sitting close to your friend. Just change your seat because they are sitting in the same seat every day. They have their closest friends sitting with them. They have the same outlook. They don't have any kind of new discussions. They, are, they know what their friend knows. Their friend knows what they know. So ultimately, there is no new discussion. They are all very much in the comfort zone and they don't like to change their place also. So first thing that I ask them to do is that change your places and don't sit near your friend. So once that is complete, then I tell them to form groups, small groups or teams of four or five students. And then we allot a task. Now, this is an offline tool which we are using, but this is very much instrumental because uh, I have tried this for the students when I had an idea pitching session in our university. I tried this uh, probably two months back where I told all the students, suppose engineering students are there, pharmacy students are there, management students are there, science students are there, law students are there. I have asked all the students to be combined into one group. That means I said that I don't want more than two engineering students in one group of six or seven. I want management student, one student or two students, not more than that in that group. So there was an interactive discussion and whatever task was given, they had a new outlook towards the task because otherwise they used to sit that, okay, CSIT together, mechanical students together. And they were just discussing the same things. So when we are teaching our students, First thing we need to realize is that we need to bring them out of their comfort zone. We need to bring them out of their closet of friends. So that is a very important part in collaborative learning, which you have to execute. And I believe this is giving me a very good result. And probably if you try it, if you're not tried it, you can try it also. Uh, that will be very useful for you to um, make the students interested in the topic and come up with new ideas. So these teams can be used in different ways. Suppose if I say the same thing and be used that, okay, if I'm teaching a subject, suppose some faculty is teaching mathematics, 
Now, if they found such groups and they give some work, and then they can tell that okay, now this is the this person is a group leader. And this group leader's responsibility is that whatever topics have been covered, that should be understood by all the students. So then they will sit again after the classes are over and they will explain to each other in the team. So that way ownership also comes that I am responsible for my team. Otherwise, what happens is they expect the teacher to do everything, faculty to do everything. So here is one way where we can make the student responsible for the work. So how can it help our students? As I told you that people, students right now are individually working, but they are not working in tandem with others. That means they are not working in a team. And this is very much harmful when they, when they go for employment or when they start their own uh, particular session because they feel that there is some kind of a limitation as far as working in a team is concerned. So they are not working towards a common goal. We need them to work towards a common goal. So that is one aspect. Students uh, are accountable to one another and they actually will be able to self-manage. They'll be able to manage things among themselves. And then they are able to, students are able to understand themselves better, work in proper groups and recognize their abilities. So that will actually lead to a lot of advantages for the entire class. So this is something which collaborative learning brings. Now, these are 20 collaborative learning tips and strategies for teachers. I have just shared the link also over here where you can go through the entire article. I have taken this from this source. But first, we need to establish group goals. Uh, keep the groups uh, like we need a lot of groups and we need uh, the groups to be in direct contact with each other and limited groups need to be there. We can establish flexible group norms. So all these things we can do ultimately and this is very effective. I have tried many of these right and this is very useful as far as the uh, teaching method is concerned, collaborative learning is concerned. Consider an assessment. Now, how do you do the assessment? You can do assessment through collaborative learning. Collaborative assessment can also be done. So, how we go with this? That can be worked out. Create a pretext and the post uh, pretest pre and the post test. That means before collaborative learning, we can conduct a test just to see the output. And after conducting uh, the collaborative learning, we can have a test. We can see the change in the output. So, all these things can be used, all these strategies can be used by the teachers effectively in physical as well as online ICT related work. Scaffolding is there, I will tell you this, this is actually a temporary structure which we build up. This is particularly where some models are to be built up. So we can ask the students to build up certain models and then we can explain it in the class. So this is a very effective approach. Normally what happens is that we teach and then students act on that. But this can be a thing where we can give the student a problem and we can say that, okay, prepare this kind of a temporary model and let us discuss this in the next session. So in the groups, they will prepare it and then we can have a discussion on that and we can explain it. So that will be more clear because the student has actually worked upon the project. So this is something which can be done. And uh, diversity is there. Now we can have diverse people. Uh, according to background also we can have in certain groups we can have gender equality so all these things matter gender also matters we should not be the totally boys group or totally girls group if it's a co-ed institution then uh, they can have joint groups so this is something where we can work about so a lot of strategies are there which can be useful enough now how can we collaborate we can collaborate through uh, i mean there are a lot of tools in google and microsoft Blogging can be done. Blogging is very effective, as I told you earlier. Project based learning, we can give them a project and then face by face, we can have a learning parameter. I also have one kind of a, a, a thing which I've implemented over here and it's very uh, fruitful. We have asked the student to form teams and uh, they have been given, assigned a topic that like, okay, any topic other than your syllabus. It may be related to IT or not related to IT. You have to prepare, that group has to prepare and share every 15 days with the class. Now by that, what I have observed is that those students who are not active have become active because they have to present before the class. So they do a lot of work. So this is again one collaborative activity which can be implemented. 
and this has raised the output of the students many fold hands on activities are there where lot of activities we can give them we can give them some uh, small uh, program and we can tell them that okay this program needs to be completed and uh, these are the terms and conditions which you have to follow in the program so that can be done or depending upon the activity suppose it's physics then there can be a different type of hands on activity so depending upon your specialization you can plan the activities creating a wall of discussion where we have a lot of things written in the wall which can be discussed wall of discussion actually is very fruitful when you are dealing with such problems so uh, there can be modes of collaboration remote role based and shared screen now one collaboration which i would like to tell you is that um, i have um, since covid i have been very active in the collaborative mode where i have collaborated with many Uh, editors, many authors outside India also in India also various cities whom I have not met, but we have uh, collaborated through various online modes and we have done a lot of projects like almost six book projects uh, we have completed, uh, many research papers we have interacted and we have used a lot of tools online to share whatever work we have done. Uh, patents also we have been working so lot of work can be done in a collaborative mode among the faculty also it's not just for the students you can also be very uh, i mean active in this front and uh, what all it needs is a uh, determination and a and a like minded team that's very important now teacher collaboration as i told you this is what we want uh, now we are working on one more small project over here uh, which probably is a very infant stage because of covid we could not implement it uh, but this year and next year we are planning to implement it now this project says that um, oh now there are six subjects to seven subjects in a particular semester so suppose if i say that btech 1 now btech 1 there are many such subjects which are related to physics some are related to electrical engineering some are related to mechanical engineering some are csit subjects so can we give them an assignment now, can all the teachers get together the mathematics if the teachers many times the students are not knowing why we are learning we have taken admission in csit why we are learning mathematics why we are learning uh, engineering subjects like mechanical engineering elements of mechanical engineering or any such subject so here actually i have asked the faculties to get in touch with each other i mean they should be sitting in a week at least two hours brainstorming on how they can actually combine the subjects and teach to the students what i mean by combine the subjects is that suppose if i say that i am teaching an x subject and somebody is teaching a mathematics subject i am teaching c subject programming in c how can we combine both of them and give them an assignment Uh, which can be done by the students right now most of the colleges or most of universities are giving assignment which are related to a particular subject suppose if i am teaching programming in c i'll be giving that assignment only but if we are able to give them every 15 days a assignment where whatever has been taught in the 15 days uh, in all the subjects we can combine that and that work can be given to the students so if the student is really attentive enough then only they'll be able to solve the assignment they will not get it directly from the internet so this is one way of actually uh, teacher collaboration which can help the students also as well as the teachers also so this is something which we need to learn about or which we need to execute now uh, we can have common and shared goals among teachers like as i said you we need collaboration we need assisting in team building efforts and we also have ownership in student learning like teachers have a sense of i i as i as a faculty i know that okay my students have to get them interested in this topic so how do i use the technology tools how do i use collaborative tools so if i use more tools i'll be able to get the student learning process active in a different manner so that is what we need to do but here again teacher motivation is very important what i mean by teacher is that faculty should be self motivated to get involved in all these activities and then instruction uh, how can we deliver better instructions as far as our teaching learning process is concerned for that we need to innovate suppose if i am going to teach a topic i need to 
do some kind of groundwork. I don't directly show the PPT slides and teach the topic. I need to tell them that, okay, how this is going to affect them. I can give them some uh, role play activities. Some case studies can be discussed. So many things are there which can actually form collaborative learning. I can involve them in different subjects also. Like uh, just I had gone to take a session in the, the first sem of BTEC. Uh, at that time, they had some mathematics related sessions. So there was something on the board regarding set theory and all which was explained. So I asked them how set theory is useful for you. Some of them were not aware of it. So I explained that also to them. So this is where we can actually involve the students more by collaborating all the subjects and all the teachers can also be active in this. So these are the benefits. I've already uh, talked about it. So I'll just skip this. Now, how we can go about this? Should we have one focus study session or a multiple shorter study sessions? So this is a pertinent problem which has been faced by many of the students and many of the teachers. How to advise the students? Should it be this first diagram or second diagram? Anyone who can unmute and reply? Whenever we have a focused study session, students are studying. Should they study continuously for 30 minutes or 10, 10 minutes on separate days or after intervals? Which would be better, according to you? Uh, please don't type in the chat window. I'm not able to access the chat window right now. So you can unmute yourself and say. Which mode would be better, 30 minutes continuous sitting or 10, 10 minutes after intervals or maybe on next other days? 10 minutes today, 10 minutes tomorrow, 10 minutes day after tomorrow. Sir, I think 10 minutes is too lesser time for students to sit and start working on something. 30 minutes would be good, you know, to get the hold of the topic or the thing or the project and then move towards it. So 30 minutes at least should be appropriate. OK, and now this survey which was done, which involved students from different countries, which said that day one who had studied continuously for 30 minutes when the test was taken they get 11 out of 20 and the test taken for those students who actually studied in a scattered staggered way like 10 minutes on day one 10 minutes on day two 10 minutes on day three they're getting 15 out of 20. so again we need to look at this again our audience may be different the survey done maybe for a different audience but this is one thing which we need to look at from a student angle also that how the students are able to respond we can have some experiments done for our class and we can see what is the output but this survey is what is suggesting that staggered learning is more uh, giving better output than comparatively what we say as a continuous learning so what what happens is that create opportunities for retrieval practice when we go to staggered way we have better opportunities for retrieval practice, more effective consolidation and organization because entire 30 minutes, this 30 minutes is an example, it can be one hour also, 10 minutes can be 20 minutes also, it depends. But what I mean to say is that if a topic is learned in a staggered manner, it is more uh, responsive from the student's angle. So more effective consolidation and organization is taking place. And new learning is depending on prior learning. So prior learning, um, I mean, all the content at one go would be difficult for the student to adapt. So this is where I think so. This is more fruitful. And then they can return to topics. Normally, we have a recap. Normally, what happens is that I do this, that, OK, I have taken a session um, before two days. Now I have a session after two days. So there's a gap of two days in between. Now what I do is that I go to the class. I just ask them some questions or i repeat some content in a short manner which can be a recap now this is returned to topics now frequent smaller assessments just like the coaching classes of most of this uh, 10 10 12 standard uh, tuitions have they have every saturday a test every sunday a test right 
so this is frequent smaller assessment so that is giving a better impact as far as students performance is concerned multiple due dates again uh, this is what leads to better learning whether it should be study 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 and then test study test study test 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 study test study test study test now what we do here is that we have study mid sem exams so we have three months of study and then mid sem exams are taken so that test may not give the exact learning capability of the student if we have study and then we have continuous test taken that is also not productive enough. but yeah this one will be more productive study then test study then test then study and test so this is one way of going with it so this is how we can go about it and uh, flipped classroom is one thing which i just wanted to cover and then we'll move on to the tools again so when we are talking about flipping a classroom actually we are giving some kind of tasks to the students and we are making students the teachers so they feel that they have been given some responsibility and they learn classroom management what is important is that flipped classroom cannot be done randomly suppose if i have not prepared my many of the faculties do that that i am not prepared for the lecture today i go to the classroom and i just give a task and tell them that okay you come and explain this now that is not effective enough so classroom management as well there you have to curate what resources you are having uh, you have to be trained in technology before you do that if you are using any kind of technology for flip classroom any tools and you have to be knowing about that you have to have a proper infrastructure for that you have to prepare for it properly and then students should be taken into confidence because it should not happen that immediately you ask for a flipped classroom that will not be possible so these are all the aspects which you need to look into when you go for a flipped classroom so a teaching method wherein video recorded lectures are reviewed as homework outside of class so that class time in turn can be used for engaging directly with the material so this is something which can be flipped classroom flipped classroom is not an online course it is not a student working without structure as i told you it's very important that you should be doing the work before going to the class and telling them about a flipped classroom or giving them that kind of flipped classroom uh, experience students spending the entire class staring at the computer screen that is not a flipped classroom student working in isolation that is not flipped classroom and flipped classroom is also not re about replacing teachers with video so very important that flipped classroom should be done in a proper manner i'll be sharing this slides also with you through iot so you can go through this i'm not going much deep into it because this is a totally different topic but i thought it can be very useful to you these are some of the tools for flipping right now normally what happens is that uh, i have seen this at uh, the premier institutes like iim etc because i was at the iim library for uh, my research work uh, in between when i was doing my phd long ago so at that time i saw that the students at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock because i used to in the night i used to go there and i used to access the library because 24 hours the library was accessible and i could uh, download a lot of content which normally i don't have access to in other libraries so that i used to download so when i took a break of 5 to 10 minutes in the night at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock at that time early morning I, at that time i saw that students were sitting in the dome outside and they were preparing some slides and they were preparing some content i asked them what is it they said that tomorrow the session is to be taken the faculty has given us some links and we are supposed to go through it and we are supposed to make ourselves ready for the session so that we can go on to advanced level discussion now this is what we call as a part of a flipped classroom so here the student is going in advance what is going to be covered and uh, accordingly the things are done so bloom sector i'm not going into this right now but this is something which actually we can go ahead i'll just go through the other tools now so like we had covered these tools now there are explanation about the tools also there are many tools so i will not be able to cover in detail the tools but i'll just give you an overview of 
which kind of tools are there so ICT tools are quizzing testing and gaming are there uh, Google forms are there book with the uh, widgets are there uh, where you can have games simulation worksheets and basically what happens is that you have to get in touch with that kind of students and students should be interested in your class so that is the uh, main objective of having these kind of tools so there are a lot of tools Kahoot is one of them which is mainly used by most of the faculty uh, Plickers is there again many of them have not used this Rubaro is there so many such tools are there which can be used you can see which tool is suitable for you and accordingly you can go for I told about creative creation so this is very important that infogram uh, storyboard these are all tools which are used for creative creations where you can create your own images you can create your own visualizations and you can uh, use it for your research work also research papers also as well as for the students also you're conducting a quiz you can prepare some kind of image you don't have to directly download it from the internet you can prepare your, your own image and it can be very useful and this can cover a lot of other topics also like uh, there can be text also images also and there can be some videos also in these tools so you can create your own creation of one or two minutes and then you can show it to the students and then ask questions based on um, that so you can use multiple tools over here so these are all tools which I talked about, like images, charts, infographics, all this can be done through these particular tools. So I've given a small brief introduction of each tool here. Then for brainstorming or organizing things, we have uh, Coggle, we have Mindomo, uh, Answer Garden. So a lot of tools are there which probably names some of the faculty may be hearing for the first time but you can just go through and explore all these tools Trello I have used it's very uh, useful you can actually go through it so these are some explanation about those tools and uh, these are some tools which are uh, normally uh, like there is a tool called feedback loops and by using this we can make an interactive study material so these are all tools which can be used a lot of tools are there Evernote is there and then PDF Pro is there. So a lot of tools are there which can help you in um, LMS related work also. So these are some of the uh, links that I've used. I'll just show you some kind of see this is one tool where we have I have just opened it to show you. Now you can take a traditional quiz over here. I hope this is visible. Yes, Yes, sir, it is visible, sir. Yeah, quizslides.com. So, again, uh, .co.uk. You can go and you can prepare your own quiz. You can put images, and accordingly, this quiz you can give to the students, whatever your subject is. So, students are very much uh, like this, like when we see KBC or any such kind of uh, quiz show. We feel that students or the audience of any age is interested in such questions. So, they are interested in seeing what is this for. So this generates an interest in the students. So I feel this such kind of tools can be used. Now suppose if I want to see this, we can have any particular essay I'm giving A, right? And then I'm submitting, right? You haven't filled all the answers to the questions. So again, you can go for ahead with all the questions and you can give the answer. So such kind of quizzes can also be given online. So there are many such, uh, tools which you can use right this is the explanation if you want to go in more detail then all these quiz explanations are given here right so socrative is there then uh, your smile tool is there so you can just click on this and you can just explore it it's a huge world actually so i've not been able to uh, compile all of them for you but yeah you can go through the details and you can just visit and you can see it so uh i think uh we are almost running out of time so i'll just conclude by this particular uh, mantra comfort is your enemy and challenge your need to challenge your limits so we if we are challenging our limits we can ask the students to do that we need to the students because students are right now following the faculties so the role model are faculties if you are not 
motivated enough they will not be motivated enough. they if they see the motivation in you they will be motivated to perform or they will hear your words so this is something which i wanted to focus upon uh, now i am open to questions the session is open for discussion now you can unmute and interact with the resource person or you can post your questions in the chat box also thank you sir thank you all and uh, most of the faculties i am just seeing that they are very experienced faculties and they are having a lot of teaching experience so uh, they can also share their experiences probably i can also learn from that because it's always a learning uh, experience Okay, uh, I think there are no questions. I again uh, thank the organizers and the audience for the patient hearing and for adjusting the session on a Sunday. Thank you very much. So, I think there are. Shall we wind up, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. On behalf of IOT Academy, we thank Dr. Sailesh Raya for the informative, enlightening, and enriching session. We thank you once again for the amazing and excellent presentation, sir. We thank you for enhancing our knowledge of the commendable presentation. We thank you very much for your efforts, sir. I thank all the participants for joining the session today. Kindly submit the feedback form using the link that will be posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir. It was an amazing session. Thank you. Please submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. We will be sharing the PPT and the recorded sessions in the groups.